Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> I'm. At, you know, it's fine. I'm actually just setting up a screen screen region there, a new scene too. So, you having to delay works out perfectly. <laughs> But uh, I'll be ready here in just a sec. Just telling people to, if they got questions they want to ask you, to uh, just tweet them at me. So maybe someone wants to know what uh, your favorite cereal is. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that voice you hear on the call with me, Zombie Grub, guys, that is Liquid Snoot. Or just Snoot. Or Snoot. As no one pronounces it that way. <laughs> yeah. Snoot. I tried. Man, when I started getting into casting, I tried so hard. But it just it wouldn't happen. It just yeah, it was snoot whether you wanted it to be or not. Yeah, it's fine. I'm I'm used to it. Like when uh, when people that are not Norwegian try to say snoot, then it sounds like really really weird. So <laughs> it's okay. Well, speaking of Norwegian, this is a segue. You just won the NSL 2013. That granted had like the longest delay to the finals I've ever seen in my life, but you <laughs> still won it. How do you feel right now, man? Uh, pretty good because it's been really close between Targa uh, and myself uh, at the competitions in the land tournaments lately and I wasn't really sure if I was able to win this but Targa wasn't in the best shape uh, he said he was a little bit sick so I think I was a bit lucky but I also uh, I also try to play a bit differently from what I usually do and in some games it worked and and in some it didn't but you know I'm just happy that I was able to win you know, I just got to say, before we get into, like, any sort of anything, that was probably the most entertaining ZVZ I've cast in a long time. I don't know about Zombie Club, but, like, really? there was there was not a point where we were bored waiting for you guys to attack. Like, so often it's like, okay, when are they going to get 200 roaches and go, right? <laughs> but uh, that early game yeah. stuff was insane. You played that fantastically. Targa, if that's how Targa plays when he's not in good shape, I am scared to see how Targa plays when he's in good form. Yeah, I mean, he's really scary in CVC. Um... I always try to be uh, a little bit unpredictable, but he always seems to be able to counter me. Um, so, you know, I try to cheese sometimes, but it never works, I feel. And whenever he is cheesing me, then it always works. So, <laughs> so I try to fall back on my macro, but then again, I get really predictable. So, so um, it's really tough to play against Targa. But, um, but in these in this series, I feel that he was just being way too aggressive, so I was able to capitalize on that, kind of knowing that he maybe wasn't feeling in the best of shapes, so I just tried to defend and do uh, big and solid timings, I guess. Cool. Uh, we actually have a couple of questions coming in from Twitter now, but before we get to those, uh, Zombie Grub, do you have anything uh, you want to ask Snoot before I start hogging the microphone here? No, no, just go into the uh, Twitter questions. All right. Uh, well, actually, first question comes not from Twitter but chat, and uh, I'll, I'll just I'll give you this one because this one should make you feel good. <laughs> Snoot, uh, this is from AC Will. You are one of the most intelligent and thoughtful players in the game, making little plays that show you have really thought it through with your game mechanics. How are you so awesome? <laughs> <laughs> first of all, th uh, thanks, I guess. Um, and I think it's just practice, uh, tons of practice. I played way more games than most people out there, so a lot of it is just experience, and then I try to understand the game better, I guess. Um, yeah, <laughs> I guess. It works, apparently, so <laughs> today's results uh, prove that much. Yeah, th there's not a whole lot of magic to um, getting good at StarCraft. I think you just need to uh, try to win all the time and try to un understand the game and that's how you become an awesome player, I guess. All right. Uh, well, our next question comes from someone named Edwins at FPS Edwin twenty seven on Twitter. asks Snoot, "What is your opinion on the current ZVP matchup, and how do you go about handling it?" <laughs> <laughs> swarm host. <laughs> yeah, of, of course it's going to be about swarm host. I think, um, I think swarm hosts are absolutely necessary simply because um, the other end game units usually kind of suck. Like the Ultra Lisk and the Broodlord are just, it's too easy to hard counter them as a Protoss player. So the swarm host is absolutely necessary, I feel. Um, I think that um, Protoss players still aren't using Sky Protoss as much as they should. Um, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of those uh, CVPs where it turns into a stalemate and people just uh, hunker down and make spores and vipers and swarm hosts. I don't really like that. Uh, and I think uh, in the future, especially if the Tempest gets buffed against spores and such, then I think 
And I actually think even without the buff, I think that Zergs will eventually be forced to play even more aggressively with the Swarm host. And the games we are seeing now is simply because of either inexperience from the Protoss or inexperience from the Zerg. Like, if a Protoss stays on Colossus only and doesn't make anything happen, then it looks really one-sided, for example. Uh, so I think I think the matchup doesn't produce very good games, but um, not everyone knows how to play end game properly either. So that's it, I guess. Well, actually, I've got a small follow up then for uh, that. Just uh, who would you say is your not favorite because you'd like to win, but who do you enjoy playing against most as far as Protoss players go? Like, if there's one person you had to play a hundred ZVPs against, who would you prefer it to be? That's a really good question. Um, I struggle a lot against the uh, Korean Protoss players in Europe, like Stardust and Patience. Um, but that's mostly because of early game stuff. Um, I don't know. I think Mana right now has a quite good end game. Mm. If he is able to get there. <laughs> I am a big fan of Mana. Yeah, his games are pretty good. Yeah, because he actually plays Sky Toss, and I like that a lot. Uh, and I also seen Titan play some interesting stuff with uh, carriers and oh, yeah. warp, warp prism high templar uh, so yeah he was one of the guys who kind of picked up on the anti swarm host uh, the advanced tactics and sky toss compositions but I also think uh, I don't think I'd want to play him but Elfie is also a very good player against uh, swarm host so no, uh, no best of 69 rematch with baby knight anytime soon <laughs> oh man that was, by the way, side so note, that's how I first yeah, learned that... about you, that series. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not the same in Heart, of, uh, in Heart of the Swarm, I feel, because like when I played the best of 69, I think I used Broodlords in maybe two or four games or something out of the uh, about 50 that we played in a row. Uh, but nowadays with the Swarm Host and the Tempest, then I, I don't think it's possible to do a best of 69 in one day anymore <laughs> if you absolutely try to win. I, don't, I just don't think it's possible. I think it's barely <laughs> did it in one day beforehand anyways. Yeah, be, uh, yeah I, I think now. it took like 11 hours or something. It was crazy. Well, uh, I got a couple more questions, but I got, I'll just ask you real quick because I don't want to take up your entire day. Do you have a lot, some more time for this or are you going to be somewhere? Cause... No, it, no, it's fine. It's fine. I got cool. plenty of time. We're going to appease the fans then. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, so I'm going to just copy paste this into chat and hopefully you can <laughs> decipher it. I, I'm Wait. assuming this is some sort of Norwegian delicacy or... Kumle or Raspeball. Those are some Norwegian food things. Let's see. Well, Mr. <laughs> Mr. X Tackle asks uh, if you like them, I guess. Let's see. I actually don't think I've eaten that many of those. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they do look a bit awkward, but I'm sure they are. Uh, I just tasted them in Google, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those look so weird. All right, well, this is uh, this is actually a really good question. This comes from Kim Strandley at Kim Strandley on Twitter. It says, uh, "Snoot, what are your thoughts on the new SC2 league in Norway? Will it help grow the Norwegian scene, or do you think it's going to be the Snoot Targa league with guests?" All right, the uh, the new uh, the new league. I think um, no, I don't think Targa and I are that dominant. Well. We usually end up winning the uh, or replacing top two, but we also have challengers like Prebs and Aiki. Uh, I I don't think I don't think it's like Targa and myself will always take top two. I think there will always be uh, possibilities for upsets, but people um, yeah people just need to realize that it's actually possible to beat us and just try even harder because that's all it takes. Um, no, I don't think I don't think Targa and I will win like every single tournament the next the next year. <laughs> well, what do you think about the actual league itself? Do you think it's helping the scene, or do you think it's just like another another tournament that everyone gets to play in and has fun? No, I think it's great because it doesn't have prizes only for the winner or only for the top two. So there's plenty of incentive for the other guys to play as well and to get their names out there because it will be casted in both. Norwegian and English, so there should be plenty of viewers as well. So I think, you know, a player like Aiki, for example, hasn't been able to get the most exposure until everyone was able to see his plays in the O-Gaming Nation Wars. 
So I think having a Norwegian league where players, Norwegian players, can showcase their skills will, you know, it's you can't call it a negative thing. It's just, it's just good for the entire scene, not just Targa and myself, but all the other players uh, as well. All right, that's pretty cool. Uh, small actually, side note to that, because they uh, we didn't get to talk about them enough, I feel, because we left them out a couple of the games, but small shout-out and side note to the people who sponsored the entire NSL, the Norwegian Star League, SC2.no, um, of course, the community website and such for everyone to congregate, the Bitcoin, SC2 Bitcoin, was a big contributor from what I understand, and iParty Norge was the Norwegian event management agency who, I guess, helped uh, tie this all together. So I'm curious, have you, have you had a lot of experience working with those any of those or is this like kind of your first time seeing any of them get involved um i think i've seen sc2 bitcoin uh invest into the uh, scene before but the um the norwegian sponsor is new to the scene so just want to give big thanks to them yeah it's always nice when like even if it's an established sponsor or a new sponsor they're helping put StarCraft together for us to enjoy. I mean, you can't help but thank them. Yeah, and I also want to apologize for for the delay of the finals because we had plenty of opportunities to play them, but uh, both of us were traveling and it just kind of kind of slipped away, I guess. So, just want to say sorry for that one more time, and uh, I'm happy that we were able to still play it. I, I had thought it got played out back in November. I think I remember messaging you or tweeting at you or something saying, like, did you guys ever finish this? Because, like, <laughs> I never got contacted again about casting it. I just thought, like, maybe it happened. They forgot about me or something. But, yeah, that took uh, – that map pool, guys, really reflects how long it took for that finals to play out. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, I'm a little bit happy because I don't know if we would be able to – I just checked the stream numbers on Liquid, and I think, I think it's about 1,000 viewers who watched this. Yeah, we uh we got pretty close. I think it was like nine eighty or something, but yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So I don't think the numbers would have been that high like seven or eight months ago. So I'm really happy we got you guys to cast this as well. No, oh, because uh, many many Norwegian tournaments in the past haven't had the uh, the best of exposure internationally. So so it was really cool that we could have an English cast of this as well, yeah. and Ooh. this many viewers. So thanks to you guys. Watching. Yeah, and thanks to everyone who tuned in. Again, you, you got to see some of the best ZVZs, let's be honest. You're going to see out of any foreigners in a long time. Hell, that rival, I was sitting in the middle <laughs> of the series. Crazy like, ZVZs. That was that was more entertaining to me than some of the Korean ZVZs I've cast. Because a lot of the Korean ones, too, they're, they're that boring max out series. But, like, I, I'm sorry, I'll bring this up. We'll go back to questions in a moment. But, like, on Whirlwind, your queens, Snoot. Those two queens were... I don't know, in some sort of godlike Super Saiyan state. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was a bit lucky. I, I expected him to expand, but he didn't. So, uh, so I knew that if I could just keep massing queens, because they're pretty imba against those uh, all ins, then I would be safe. <laughs> all right. Well, I I have a team question, I guess, for you from uh, Transistand, Dave Young. Uh, he basically says, "Gigi, have you been practicing chilling with your new clanmates, Mana and Bunny, yet? And how goes life on Team Liquid?" Um, actually, I've practiced a lot with uh, Bunny before the um, my WCS chal uh, <coughs> challenger match against U Thermal. So even before he joined Liquid, I practiced a ton with him. I think Bunny, um, Bunny and Daishi are the top two TVC players in, in Europe, I feel, and Happy is really good also. But I think um, I'm really happy that Bunny joined the team, and Mana as well, of course, but, but Bunny is absolutely superb uh, CVT practice for me. So I'm really happy about the new additions. I've been practicing a little bit with Mana as well, but I expect to practice even more in the future. Um, and yeah, Life on Liquid is actually really good. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I can I can always go to as many tournaments as I want to. I can get good practice. And uh, especially the team chat we have on Skype is just awesome and very encouraging. So it's a good team to be in for sure. Yeah, I was. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. From a fan point of view, it kind of looked like a little shaky for your StarCraft Tunis uh, right after WCS and such. But I gotta tell you, like, I'm really glad you're still uh, still there to be a big pillar, a Zerg pillar in Team Liquid. You and TLO are definitely some of my more favorite uh, Zerg players to cast. So glad to yeah, see thanks. it's all going well. Yeah, I'm having a lot more fun with the game, and like in this series, I try to be a bit more aggressive than I usually am. I try to cheese. Uh, I tried to cheese Targon Whirlwind, but then he cheesed back, so... <laughs> Again, yeah, Whirlwind is probably I'm my trying... favorite, like, of this yeah. whole series. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to do the same stuff all the time, 
and in general, I don't take the game that seriously anymore. So, so I allow myself to do a little bit more crazy things now. Do you think that's helped your <laughs> gameplay then, like being able to relax and not be so like stressed out about certain strategies? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, actually, some of the players that do um, that are the best in Europe also cheese a lot. So. I've been trying to cheese a bit more, but at the same time, it's like if you try to cheese or if you try to do something that's a little bit crazy, then it's very easy to just face a build or, you know, just lose. And it's purely because of a uh, coin flip, so to speak. Mm. So it's part of a, you know, it doesn't give you the best of feelings when you lose, but it's also kind of fun when you win, I guess. <laughs> and, and playing safe doesn't work all the time. Even even if it can carry you to uh, decent results, then you have to switch it up as well. But yeah, absolutely. I don't take it that seriously anymore. So Yeah, I've or... noticed because uh, for the <laughs> longest time, anytime I cast you, I would always kind of like in the back of my mind be like, okay, he's playing gasless again. What a surprise. Like that safe <laughs> opening out of Snoop. But um, the, yeah. the last like couple months specifically, it's been really nice. Like whether I've been casting or watching on a stream, seeing the the different builds has been really refreshing. So I'm glad to see that's working out for you. Um, yeah, especially especially the um, the final build on Daybreak is one of my absolute favorites right now. The uh, the Carapace versus two base Mira. Mm. It's so cool. It's so smart. It's so well designed. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, uh, we got two more questions, and I think we'll wrap this up. But one question for me before we do that is, uh, there's another thing I've noticed you do a little bit more than other Zerg players. And this actually gets more into the specifics of the game. So, like, it's Roach versus Roach. But I'll notice sometimes in the early game, you'll be one of the players who actually makes, like, a lot of lings for cannon fodder. Do you, now, yeah. I've always wondered, do you do that, like, tactically? And you're like, yes, this will work out because I'm specifically going to soak those hits? Or is that kind of like a desperation thing that works out really well in the end? Um, do you mean when I defend or, like... In the early game, in general, I'm just saying, like I've noticed you're one of the players who will like in the early game, whether it's defending like or whether you're going aggressive with your roaches, you'll tend to throw in a couple lings, like oh, not like a right. lot, but like a couple. Um, like in the game on Cloud Kingdom, then I went for a one-one uh, timing, and I knew that since I had one-one, then um, I could mix in a few links as well because if my opponent doesn't have plus two, then the links will still. Uh, they will still not be two shotted until he gets plus two. So, so making a big one-one timing with uh, roaches and then circlings to reinforce can be pretty good because the uh, circling reinforcements hit a tiny bit before a um, before a roach reinforcements would hit. But in general, if I make links early on, sometimes it backfires. Like on the uh, Red Bull battlegrounds when I played against Hyun then he just made roaches off of two bases. And in those cases, if you overproduce links, then you're in quite a lot of trouble. So um, I guess if I'm making links early on, then it's more of a scouting thing. And it's also because the uh, meta game is somewhat favored towards Mutalisks still. But uh, Targa, <laughs> Targa has been very good at uh, shutting down my early links just by going for two base roach. <laughs> so um, sometimes it's good, sometimes it backfires, but it's mainly it's I guess it's mainly just to play safe, to get the information that I want, and then uh, f transition into roach or infestors or you know based on whatever I can see with those links. But yeah, sometimes it can backfire because you are really low on drones. Fair enough. All right, so two questions left, guys, and we'll wrap this all up and let Snoop get back to his day. Um, I'm going to combine these two, actually, into one because these are basically the same question. First off, someone asks, how do you feel about WCS groups? And then another person basically asked, uh, do you think a European will take the finals this year or do you think it's still going to be a Korean? Um, For WCS my, Europe, obviously. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> my group has MVP, uh, who is playing from Korea, I think, and uh, Hasuobs and Firecake, and I think I can make a top two in that group. Uh, so I think it's a good group. Uh, group A was by far the uh, most difficult group, I feel. So I'm I'm kind of happy that I wasn't put in Group A. Uh, and just based on former results, I guess I will say that it's likely that a Korean will win this season. But I think you gotta believe, are... Snoot. You gotta believe. I think I think there are plenty of players that have a chance to win. We have some pretty strong players remaining in the uh, Premier League, so I think a foreigner could win as well. Yeah, there's that Myself one... Uh, 
Yeah, I was going to say that one Zerg player, Liquid Snoot, probably has a pretty decent chance. I think I need a bit more practice, but, you know, I'm doing my best to prepare, and if I can if I can improve my macro game a bit, then I can, I can uh, beat the uh, top uh, players in Europe easily. Well, I'm sure we will all be cheering you on and wishing you luck. The very last question here is a bit of a silly one, which is, I put it off. Someone was asking you specifically, what is your take on Targa's clan name, and how did you feel about his decal, the little uh, picture floating above his hatchery? Yeah, I think the uh, decal is uh, appropriate because it's the <laughs> year of Hearthstone. It caught me the, and yeah. Zombie Grub off guard. Like we were like, wait a minute, what? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The uh, the clan tag is, you know, I don't know if it's a uh, preference of Targa or whatever, but <laughs> it's it's quite funny. Well, I mean, he had that clan tag and then Harstam's picture. I mean, it's kind of like, mm, uh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's also kind of sketchy. Mm. Harstam, of course, would take a lot of pictures with uh, Nurchio in the shower and stuff. So you never know what's going on behind the scenes of esports, guys. Yeah. It was, uh, Stuart, again, congratulations, and thank you very kindly for taking the time to talk with us and uh, answer some questions from your fans here on Twitter. I hope I managed to get everyone's questions in there. I sincerely apologize if I missed anyone. I think I got them all, though. Uh, do you have any final words? Obviously, you're probably going to want to do shout-outs to your sponsors and whatnot, but uh, do you have any final words before that for, uh, I guess, your fans or your audience? Um, yeah, I, I've been practicing really, really hard the uh, last few months, and I'm having a lot of fun with the game, so... Um, I think this this year will be really good for me, and I will be able to show you guys some really good games. Uh, so, just want to say thanks to all the people who cheered me on, because it's meant a lot. And you know, how should I say this? I've been a bit uh, emo about the game, but then the fans come and cheer me up, so that really helps. And I feel like I'm in a really good trend right now, just improving every single day. So, big thanks, and I hope to. Um, I think I'll stream a bit uh, very soon as well, like the next days. And of course, I'm really happy about our new head sponsor, HyperX. I think uh, without HyperX, we would not be able to get Mana and Bunny, maybe. So big thanks to HyperX and our other sponsors as well, Razer, Twitch, Barracuda, Need for Seat, and Shiny Things. So yeah, big shout out to my team as well. And, yeah, okay, one final thing, <laughs> and that's for the Norwegian scene and all the people who are making these tournaments happen in Norway and uh, especially online is really cool. So big shout-outs to the uh, Norwegian lands as well because, uh, you know, they're really supporting the Norwegian scene a lot. Yeah, that's it... part of the reason why Targa and myself have become professional players, so it's very important. Yeah, uh, again, I guess a small shout-out and nod to SC2.no, SC2 Bitcoin, and iParty Norwich, the sponsors of the uh, NSL for this, or for 2013, rather. So, uh, yep. yeah. we'll just wrap it up here with an awkward goodbye, I guess. Thanks again for talking <laughs> with us, Snoot, and I hope you have a wonderful day, man. And uh, yeah, yeah, thank you guys for casting once again, and thanks to all the viewers for tuning in. It was a lot of fun. All right, man, we'll take care. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this stream up. Uh, Zombie Grub, I'll call you back so we can say our goodbyes, I guess. And uh, yeah, take care, Snoot. Yeah, take care.